Archaeologists have uncovered a mystery that has bothered scientists since the days of ancient Egypt. Most Egyptians didn't even know about this. How much can you sell old dried fruit for? The mystery of a metal treasure that appeared long before the Iron Age, an unexplained find in the forest, and much more. Watch this video until the end. Hi friend, you are on the Kurtop channel. Old Dried Lemon In the UK, a 285-year-old lemon found in an old chest was sold at auction. The buyer paid £1,400 for it. This brown dried lemon was discovered when locals were sorting through their uncle's belongings and found a 19th-century chest. Suspecting that the chest might be valuable, they decided to show it to auctioneer David Brettel. While Brettel was photographing a chest to sell, he came across a lemon. The citrus peel bore the inscription, presented by Mr. P. Lou Francini, November 4, 1739, to Miss E. Baxter. It is believed that lemon was brought to England from British India as a romantic gift. Brettel decided to have a little fun and put the lemon up for auction with a starting price of pound 4060. However, the lemon was sold for a record almost 1.5 thousand pounds. The high value of a lemon is due to its rarity because an item like this is unlikely to ever appear at auction again. Strange Rock on the Beach Traveler Kyle Finley, while walking along Edisto Beach in South Carolina one evening, discovered a fossilized tooth of a prehistoric American mastodon. Kyle has been vacationing on Edisto Beach with his family since childhood. Finding fossils had always been his favorite pastime, but this find came as a complete surprise. A representative from the Natural History Museum in London confirmed that Kyle's photographs do indeed show a tooth from an American mastodon or mammoth Americanum. The American Mastodon is a distant relative of mammoths and elephants that lived in North America from the late Miocene to the late Pleistocene and went extinct about 10,000 years ago. These animals were lower and stronger than mammoths. Females reached 2 meters in height and males up to 3. Previously, megalodon teeth and the remains of other prehistoric mammals were found on this beach. Artifacts of a Lost Mysterious Civilization Archaeologists have discovered gold jewelry, arrowheads, and a large bronze mirror in burial mounds dating back about 2,000 years in the Turkestan region of southern Kazakhstan. These artifacts are believed to have been made during the time of the Kangju state, which ruled the region between the 5th century BC and 4th century AD. The finds demonstrate the high skill of Kangju artisans who traded with ancient Rome, China, and the Kushan Empire. The bronze mirror, in style and design, probably originated in China during the Han Dynasty. Similar mirrors were found in Afghanistan and the southern Urals, which indicates the high status of the woman next to whom it was buried. Archaeologists claim that the state of Kanju was a federation of different peoples, including the Sarmatians, Xiongnu, and Sakas. The location of the Kangju cities on the Silk Road facilitated diplomatic and trade ties with the entire ancient world. The artifacts will be exhibited at the National Museum of the Republic of Kazakhstan in Astana. Prehistoric Canoes at the Bottom of the Lake The Wisconsin Historical Society discovered 11 ancient boats ranging in age from 4,500 to 800 years old, along with fishing nets and tools in Lake Mendota. Canoes are found on the lake bottom and along the shoreline. Experts suggest that an unknown civilization flourished here. The Ho-Chunk tribe lived in the vicinity of Lake Mendota, but even earlier, the Paleo-Indians appeared here about 12,000 years ago. The boats, known as dugout canoes, are made from solid logs. Archaeologists have been excavating the lake since 2021 and discovered a 1,200-year-old 4, 5-meter-long boat with ancient fishing nets at a depth of 9 meters. Radiocarbon dating showed the oldest canoe to be about 4,500 years old. The latest red oak boat dates from around 1250 AD. The boats were lifted from the bottom of the lake using inflatable bags and transported to the shore. Archaeologists do not plan to recover other canoes due to their fragility. Children's Drawings in Pompeii These findings immerse us in the everyday life of ordinary people on the eve of the disaster. Antique graffiti depicting fighting gladiators was found among the ruins of Pompeii. Scientists believe that these scribbles provide a better understanding of the way of thinking of the ancient Romans. The charcoal drawings were discovered among the ruins of the courtyard of the Casa del Secondo Cenacolo Colonnado, colonnaded house of the Second Last Supper. 
Researchers say the drawings were created by children probably aged five, seven years. This is confirmed by the fact that nearby there was a silhouette of a small hand outlined in charcoal. This confirms that even ancient Roman children visited amphitheaters to watch bloody spectacles. Graffiti was found on one of the walls of the corridor near the service yard, approximately 1.5 meters from the floor level. The children probably climbed onto the scaffolding. The drawings depict two gladiators facing each other. Nearby is a scene of Venatio, hunting games, also with two fighters armed with long spears. They appear to be about to fight a pair of wild boars. On the right is the head of a bird of prey, presumably an eagle. In another room, most likely intended for storing amphorae, another series of drawings appeared on the walls, again at a not very high height. These are three small hands outlined in charcoal, two scenes of gladiators fighting, two figures playing with a ball, a boar, and finally, a scene of hand-to-hand -hand combat in which one of the two fighters is lying down. The Oldest Private Company Archaeologists in Turkey have found a cuneiform tablet that is about 4,000 years old. This discovery made it possible to establish that the tablet recorded the creation of one of the earliest commercial firms. Excavations were carried out in the ruins of the ancient city of Kultepe, located in Anatolia. Numerous cuneiform tablets dating back to around 1950 BC were found at the site, confirming their age to be around 4,000 years old. The tablet represents the earliest known record of a commercial company being registered. The first commercial company was founded with an authorized capital of 15 kilograms of gold and had 12 founders. Each of them automatically became a shareholder in the company, with each having different shares depending on how much gold they contributed. The company's capital was managed for 12 years by a merchant named Cupid Ishtar. All transactions were strictly recorded and sealed in the presence of witnesses. If someone wanted to withdraw their share before the deadline, they were given about 4 kilograms of silver instead of 1 kilogram of gold. This ensured that capital would remain in the company for a long period. This find is important evidence of early forms of business and shows how commercial activities were already regulated and documented in ancient times. Face of Amenhotep III Amenhotep III ruled ancient Egypt 3,400 years ago at the height of its power. Considered one of the richest men in history, he was revered as a living god and was the grandfather of Tutankhamun. Now we can see his true face thanks to scientific reconstruction. Amenhotep III led Egypt to unprecedented prosperity and international power. There are more statues of him than any other pharaoh, but his face has never been reconstructed. An international team of scientists decided to show us what this man looked like. Michael Habicht, an archaeologist at Flinders University in Australia, notes that Amenhotep III looked different than in his statues. This suggests that all the Egyptians who lived after his death did not know what he really looked like. His face after Reconstruction expresses the calm of a man who stood for peace and lived in an era of economic prosperity. Research showed that the pharaoh was obese, sick and inactive, suffered from dental problems, was almost bald, and had a height of only 156 centimeters, which made him one of the shortest pharaohs. Brazilian graphics expert Cicero Moraes digitally reconstructed Amenhotep III's skull using data from living donors to determine the size and position of the nose, ears, eyes, and lips. The reconstruction also took into account historical data about his strong physique. This is the first close-to-reality image of the face of Amenhotep III, which includes not only the face, but also clothing and accessories. Amenhotep III died between the ages of 40 and 50, leaving his successor a country at the peak of power and wealth. In diplomatic letters, foreign rulers begged him to send them gold, describing Egypt as a country where gold was as abundant as sand. There is speculation that Amenhotep III's mummy may have been covered in gold leaf, making it look like a statue of a god. It is also suggested that the pharaoh was a great connoisseur of women, importing hundreds of foreign harem ladies. After the death of Amenhotep III, his son Amenhotep IV changed his name to Ahinaten and established the cult of the sun god Aten. However, his son Tutankhaten restored the cult of Amun and changed his name to Tutankhamun, becoming one of the most famous pharaohs thanks to the discovery of his tomb in 1922. Unknown Statue in a Thai Forest Recently, mushroom pickers in Thailand found a stone sculpture of a woman resembling Buddha's mother and reported the discovery to researchers. 
Despite the remoteness of the region, archaeologists have doubts about the origin of the statue. This discovery has sparked controversy among scientists who are trying to determine the age of the statue. One of the people who found the statue shared the find on social networks, expressing his surprise and admiration. He called it a blessing because the sculpture was found in a place he had known for a long time. The sculpture, carved on the sloping surface of a rock, depicts a woman in full height. She has long hair and traditional clothing, including a long skirt and a heavy scarf around her neck. A woman holds a branch above her head. Some believe that the sculpture dates from the Dvaravadi period, a kingdom of Southeast Asia, 6th to the 11th centuries, and depicts Maya Devi, the mother of Siddhartha Gautama who became the Buddha. However, this theory is not generally accepted. An art historian from Silpakorn University in Thailand believes the sculpture may be more recent. He claims that the sculptor imitated ancient Indian art but created his work later. The specialist points out the sculpture's facial features, such as eyebrows and lips, which do not match those of the Dvaravati era. He also notes that the image of Maya Devi holding a fig tree branch was not common in the region during that era. The fig tree, native to Southeast Asia, has religious significance for Buddhists and Hindus. Love Conquers All The artifact was found during archaeological work on a 15th century harbor crane sandwiched between two defensive towers. Polish archaeologists have discovered a medieval decoration in the shape of a dove with the Latin inscription Amor Vincit Omnia, Love Conquers All. The dove badge contains the remains of two handles, which allowed it to be hung on a chain or attached to clothing. For the ancient Greeks and Romans, the dove symbolized love, devotion, and care. The dove was the sacred animal of the love goddesses Aphrodite and Venus. Dr. Anna Rimbish lubievska an archaeologist at the museum, says pigeons are associated with love and fidelity. A pair of doves symbolizes care and devotion to a partner, making them the perfect symbol of love and family. The National Maritime Museum in Gdansk said that such decorations were popular in Gdansk between the 14th and 15th centuries. This fashion came from Western Europe, especially from the Netherlands and England. This harbor crane was once the largest working crane in the world. It also served as a defensive structure and one of the city gates. The crane had a lifting capacity of 4 tons to a height of 11 meters, which was achieved thanks to two massive wooden wheels at the base, each of which had a diameter of 6 meters. Since 2020, work has continued to restore the port crane, which was severely damaged during World War II. Viking Sword in Trash on May 27th, Ivan Tvaitane Lovra and his son were cleaning their farm in Suldal, Norway. While cleaning, they found a metal object that turned out to be a valuable artifact. Archaeologists with many years of experience took the sword for examination. They had never encountered such finds. During the Viking Age, a sword was a major indicator of status and wearing one was a privilege. X-ray examination of the artifact allowed scientists to obtain valuable information. The blade retains the contours of an engraving in the form of a cross and possibly letters. The weapon dates back to between 900 and 1050, but the sword has lost almost half its length. According to the Gulaming Law, the sword was a mandatory attribute of free men who attended meetings. The find may be the famous sword of Ulfbert from the Viking Age or early Middle Ages. Sigmund Orl, professor of archaeology at the University of Stavanger, explains that Ulfberts were high-quality swords produced in the Frankish Empire, now Germany. About 170 such swords are known, most of which were found in Scandinavia. Ulfberts are made of crucible steel with a high carbon content, up to 1.2%. Treasure Older Than the Iron Age Researchers have finally uncovered the mystery of two unusual artifacts from the gold treasure Treasures of Valena. A pair of pieces of jewelry, partly of extraterrestrial origin, have been found in Iberian Bronze Age treasures. The dull bracelet and the rusty hollow hemisphere decorated with gold turned out to be forged from metal that fell from the sky in the form of a meteorite. The discovery was made by Salvador Rovira Loren, former head of conservation at the National Archaeological Museum of Spain. His work showed that metalworking technologies and techniques in Iberia 3,000 years ago were more advanced than previously thought. The treasures of Valena Cache include 66 items found in 1963 in what is now Alicante. These pieces are considered a prime example of Bronze Age jewelry in the Iberian Peninsula and Europe. Two pieces of jewelry, a small hemisphere and a bracelet in the shape of a hryvnia, have elements that archaeologists have called iron. 
This posed a problem since the Iron Age on the Iberian Peninsula began around 850 BC and gold jewelry dates back to between 1500 and 1200 BC. The difference between meteorite and terrestrial iron is the high nickel content of meteorite iron. Despite the rust, the results of the study showed that the hemisphere and bracelet were made from meteorite iron dating back to approximately 1400 to 1200 BC. Oldest Photograph in Germany the date of invention of photography is considered to be 1839. However, a photo was discovered in Munich that changes history. A photograph taken two years earlier was found in the German Museum. The photograph, measuring 4 by 4 centimeters, depicts a Munich landmark, the Frauenkirche Cathedral. The photograph was taken by the German scientist Franz von Kobel in 1837. Researcher Cornelia Kemp found this photo in the archive. It was previously believed that the oldest photograph in Germany dates back to 1839. It was in this year that Louis Daguerre invented the daguerreotype, but a discovery in Munich shows that the first photograph in Germany was taken in March 1837. Kobel marked the date on the back of the salt-printed photograph. In the photo, the Frauenkirche appears as a shadow against the dark sky. The image was upside down and exposed for hours. The oldest photograph in Germany will not be seen in the permanent exhibition of the museum. It will be stored in a special room with a low temperature. Rare Astronomical Instrument An 11th century medieval brass astrolabe was discovered by accident, but has proven to be an important piece of evidence of cross-cultural scientific interaction. Created in Spain, it later received inscriptions in different languages as the new owners adapted it to their own needs. This artifact is unique, like a palimpsest, reflecting the changing ideas and needs of its owners. This is not just a rare example of an ancient instrument. This is a powerful testimony to the scientific exchange between Arabs, Jews, and Christians over the centuries. The Verona astrolabe has undergone many changes, passing from hand to hand. At least three owners added translations and corrections, two in Hebrew and one in Indo-European. Astrolabes are maps of the sky with rotating parts that help determine position in time and space. They were useful for navigation, astronomy, and astrology. The Mystery of the Death Spot Death is an integral part of life. All people are mortal, but only a few leave behind riddles that will puzzle generations. In the abandoned mental hospital The Ridges, there is a stain in the shape of a human body on the concrete floor. This is where a patient named Margaret Schilling died. The woman lay there for several weeks and the spot appeared in 1979, causing a lot of speculation and hoaxes. Forensic experts found that the stain was formed as a result of the decomposition of the body. The Ridges, originally known as Athens Mental Health Center, is located in Athens, Ohio. Opened in 1874, this asylum, like many others at the time, was intended to isolate the mentally ill from society. The Ridges could accommodate about 550 patients. However, by the 1950s, the hospital was overcrowded with approximately 2,000 patients. There are myths that Margaret was deaf and dumb and was unable to call for help, hiding from the staff. She was slowly dying in a locked room. In fact, Margaret was an ordinary woman with mental disabilities. Married with three children, she began to suffer when her mother died. Visions and conversations with her deceased mother led her to the orphanage. Most likely, Margaret died of heart failure caused by the cold in the unheated part of the building. She was found naked, with her clothes neatly folded nearby. Removal of the body left a permanent stain caused by decomposition and exposure to sunlight. Despite attempts to clean it, the stain remained in its place, recalling the tragic fate of the patient. Mysticism lovers quickly created a legend that the stain is an imprint of Margaret's soul, which wanders the corridors of the hospital. They claim that her ghost can still be seen in the form of a blurry figure with a blank look. After the hospital closed, the complex was transferred to Ohio State University. After renovation, the hospital turned into an educational institution. In that same room, they made an archive, covering the silhouette with tiles. However, some claim that they saw the ghost of a woman with folded hands as if offering a prayer to someone invisible. Please rate this video with a thumbs up or down and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching it to the end. Bye, everyone.